professional research assistant at the University of Colorado Anschutz Medical Campus. I work in the Department of Anesthesiology and I do primarily neuroscience research. Something interesting about my background is that my undergraduate degree is actually in psychology. I just wanted to say that because as an inspiration to you who's watching, you can do almost anything that will you know, apply to science, even if you're in a different field. As long as you work hard and get to be um, interested in a topic, you can certainly study it and work there. So the first thing that I do whenever I'm um, doing cell culture is I check out the plate first and see what the density of the cells are like. So sterile technique is extremely important in cell culture. So often throughout this video, you're gonna see me spray my gloves with a 70% ethanol mixture um, and changing them frequently, which I can feel good about because these are biodegradable. <laughs> So cell culture is used in a variety of topics that are, that are discussed in science and specifically in neuroscience as well. Um, our lab is looking at pain in the study of anesthetics like you get when you go and take your tonsils out or something like that or get a surgery. Um, so even though we have really advanced drugs to help us through that in a safe way, um, there's still some things that we don't understand and science of course is always improving. These cells are gonna be used to study that. They're genetically modified to express a certain channel. And so this channel is going to increase the flow of information from one cell to another as that pain is transferred. So what I'm gonna show you today is um, the process of something called passaging cells. And that means basically just taking them off of the bottom of a plate where they've been growing for several days and then putting them on another plate. And the point of doing that is because cells are living things and they keep growing, um, if you leave a cell in a plate like this for very long, then they'll overgrow and they won't be usable for experiments anymore. So you take a glass pipette and we take off of the old media. The media is this stuff in pink here and basically it's like food for cells. This is a vacuum, so it's going to suck off this media. Now we're going to apply a chemical called trypsin. And what trypsin does is it typically it breaks down um, the proteins that cells use to hold themselves to the bottom of the plate. And then to speed up the reaction between the cell proteins and trypsin, I'm going to put it in an incubator for a minute. And an incubator is just a space that has a certain level of carbon dioxide and heat that makes the cells really happy. So now the process of trypsinizing is done, and what we'll do is we'll stop it by adding more media. So basically with our media, we double the amount of trypsin that's in there, which kind of overwhelms that um, chemical and makes it stop breaking down the cell's protein. This is a fun part of the process because you can actually see the cells as they come off of the plate. Then what I'm going to do is put them into this tube called a conical because it's shaped like a cone on the bottom. Um, and we're going to put it into a centrifuge. A centrifuge is basically going to spin it really quickly and what that is gonna do is make all of our cells congregate or gather um, at the bottom of this tube. And we do that because even though you can see it's not really this color pink, like the trypsin, there still is some media and trypsin in there. As you can see, it's kind of a mix of those two colors. So we wanna make sure that there's no trypsin in the media and cell mixture when we put them onto a new plate. So here's our centrifuge. And these are the things that spin around. So I'll balance it with just some water across. Um, and then it'll spin really quickly like this for two minutes. <laughs> Our process is done and if you look really closely you can see the pellet which is the 
gathering together of all these cells at the bottom of this conical. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove all of this media, give it some new media, and what's called resuspend it. First I'm going to spray my hands. And all that's left is the cells here. So now I'll give it fresh media. And then I need to pipette up and down so that I resuspend the cells. Basically what that means is that all these cells are floating in this media mixture. So these are the plates that I'm gonna use. I'm gonna make two of them. And the first thing that I do is I label them. And this is really important because otherwise you don't know what you're, which cells you're doing or how many times you've done it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is write the cell type on here. So these are um, human embryonic kidney cells, but this is the channel that I talked about that they are um, specialized with. And then this number called passage is how many times I've done this process. So this plate was on passage 12 and these will be passage 13. I will put new media in here before I put the cells in here. So to do that, I'm gonna use a large pipette called a seriological pipette. This just helps me do this process faster. I use this guy, which is called a pipette man. <laughs> in total, these plates will get 10 milliliters. So now that I've put fresh media in these plates, then I can give my cells in them too. So for that, I use a smaller pipette That'll allow me to do 100 microliters. And then to ensure an even distribution of the cells on the plate, I gently rock them back and forth. So that's a process of passaging. Now I'll put them back in the incubator and they'll stay there for a couple of days until they're ready to pass it again.